This past weekend, I went to the movies and I saw Doctor Strange 2 and the Multiverse Hullabaloo. This is the latest entry into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and another movie tackling the absurdity of the multiverse, hence the title. With the man himself Sam Raimi behind the wheel and a promising setup, it seemed like there was no way this could fail. But sadly, this was not totally the case. While Multiverse of Madness was surprisingly good in some ways, it also left me feeling quite disappointed by the end. Before I get into the review, remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video, and check out my channel for other videos like this. Alright, now let's get into it. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness follows up on Doctor Strange's character arc from Doctor Strange, Avengers Infinity War, Endgame, and Spider-Man No Way Home. Oh, and you also need to watch all of WandaVision to have any idea what's going on. With so many plot lines being followed up in this movie, it was inevitable that some would take a back seat. While there are some underwhelming character resolutions, which we'll get into later, I did really like what they did with Doctor Strange's character. The idea of having him consider his choice in Infinity War and Endgame is interesting and is a logical follow-up to his exploration of the multiverse, because how can there only be one right option if there are infinite possibilities, right? Even though we don't see quite as many different versions of Doctor Strange as I would have hoped for, we do at least get to see what separates our Strange from all the other versions of him in the multiverse. While the others are cold and calculating, our Strange has learned the value of individuals and how to think beyond himself. Almost as if he very recently learned a valuable lesson about power and responsibility from a certain arachnid-themed crime fighter. I like that Strange is still able to break the rules of magic and what he was taught to do the right thing. We've seen him do this before, like in the first movie, but it's taken to the extreme here. The best part of Multiverse of Madness in general is the direction by Sam Raimi. The MCU thus far has for the most part been a homogenous blob, lacking any sort of style or directorial influence, other than a few exceptions like Thor Ragnarok and Guardians of the Galaxy. But this movie finally feels like the studio took a step back and let Raimi run wild with it in the best way possible. The camera is moving all over the place with tons of zooms and Dutch angles. One shot that stood out specifically was the one of Wanda kneeling on the ground talking to her kids, but there is loads of other cool camera work just like that. I also really appreciated the clear horror movie inspiration throughout. I've seen a ton of people saying this movie pushed the boundaries of what a PG-13 movie can be, which I don't think is very accurate. It mostly just feels like that because of how tame the rest of these superhero movies tend to be. But the gore and general darker tone were very refreshing for a Marvel movie, and I was totally on board. The part at the end with the zombie Strange and his arsenal of undead souls was so awesome and easily one of the best parts of the movie. But I think my favorite part had to be the absolutely brutal kills of a certain group of people. But even though Raimi had a hand in the majority of this film, there is still clearly the standard Marvel Studios checklist holding it back. From here on out, I'm going to be going into spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie, this is your warning. If you want to avoid spoilers, you can skip to this part in the video. Okay, so the main villain of this movie is Wanda, and while I figured that was the case as soon as it was announced that she would be in it, they did a pretty good job hiding it in the marketing. Her character arc coming out of WandaVision seemed to be going in a much different direction, other than that small post credit scene at the end of her using the Darkhold. I think my problem with it is that the WandaVision post credit scene and her villainous turn in Multiverse of Madness feel entirely disconnected from everything that happened in the show. It seemed like she realized what she did was wrong in the end when she sacrificed everyone she cared about, but clearly the exact opposite happened and she became even more selfish. Looking at her character in this movie alone, I really like what they did with her for the most part. I just wish there would have been a better through line between WandaVision and Multiverse of Madness. Like, obviously, there was quite a bit of time between when they took place, but we obviously missed something important where she just straight up turned evil. Anyway, moving on from that, I think Elizabeth Olsen did a great job portraying this drastic character shift. Wanda was a formidable threat throughout the movie, and they gave her some great lines, especially when she kills the Illuminati. And I suppose that means it's time to move on to the elephant in the room, all these random ass people they brought together for this version of the Illuminati. Like I said before, Marvel has a checklist to get through with all of these movies, and this was clearly the cameo portion of the list. I was pleasantly surprised by the surprising lack of crowd-pleasing cameo moments, but this whole scene was such a weird decision. They could have very easily thrown in the obvious choices like Iron Man, Hulk, or some version of Black Panther, 
So I guess I appreciate them doing something different, but I have no clue why they went for so many oddball choices. We got to see Black Bolt return from the Inhuman show, which was probably exciting for the three people who watched it. The Patrick Stewart cameo felt completely pointless because as much as I love some of the X-Men movies, this is not even the same Charles from those movies. It seems like the only reason they even picked him was for the marketing. Then you have John Krasinski appearing as Mr. Fantastic for the first time. I know everyone has been talking about him in the role because of that one fan art picture from a while ago, but I have always been of the opinion that he is not a good casting for Reed Richards. Obviously, he looks enough like him because he's a white guy with a beard, but I just can't see him playing this super genius type role, and while we didn't get to see much of him in this movie, he did not do anything to win me over. He's great as Jim Halpert, but there is no overlap between any of his previous roles and what a good Reed Richards would need. But that's besides the point anyway, it was just a weird group of characters to bring together, especially when considering how well known they are to general audiences. The one thing I liked about this part of the movie was seeing Wanda kill every single one of them. When Wanda said, what mouth? It was probably my favorite part of the whole movie. Seeing her make Black Bolt's head explode and turn Reed to string cheese was incredible, and I just wish it would have happened sooner. It was a little silly that Captain Carter put up such a good fight before getting cut in half, and it was also stupid that Captain Marvel died from falling rubble when she literally stiffed a punch to the face from Thanos in Endgame. I think the scene works as far as showing the difference between this Strange and the ones from the other universes, and showing just how strong Wanda is, but it goes on for much longer than it needs to. I'm not the biggest fan of some of the other character arcs in this movie either. The way Wanda's ends by having a building fall on her is super lame, and obviously they want to leave the option to bring her back in the future, which is almost guaranteed to happen, but it was such an anticlimactic way for her to go out. I think America Chavez is a very cool character, but they did not give her much to do in this movie at all. She is basically just a plot device instead of a character, and she doesn't get to do anything until the very end. Hopefully they give her more to do whenever she shows up again, because she has potential, especially the relationship she started to develop with Strange. The plotline about Strange and Christine is super weak, too. Considering she was only in the first Doctor Strange for like 15 minutes total, it is hard for me to believe that she is that important to Strange in every single universe. I do like that he was questioning whether he was truly happy or not, but this half-baked romance between him and a different version of Christine that he knows nothing about did not work for me at all. Casting Rachel McAdams in this role and then criminally underutilizing her is such a huge mistake on Marvel's part, so I'm glad that they at least tried to give her more to do in this movie, even though it didn't really work that well. But my biggest complaint, and the most disappointing part of Multiverse of Madness, is the severe lack of madness in the multiverse. The title and all the marketing for this movie lead you to believe that Strange is going to be visiting tons of crazy universes, when in actuality, he only ends up visiting like two. Not only that, but the ones that he did visit weren't that exciting at all. We get to see a universe where there's flowers everywhere and the stoplights are reversed, and another one where Doctor Strange is evil and living in a void by himself. There is one part where we see Strange and America thrown throughout all these crazy universes, but it's only like a minute long and they don't even stop in any of them. For me, when I saw that scene in the trailer, it made me want to see them go to all these crazy places and visit all these crazy characters that are completely different from the universe they're from. But this is not at all what happens because the trailer scene is basically exactly what happens in the movie. Having just recently seen Everything Everywhere all at once, which takes full advantage of its multiversal setting to go into crazy, never-before-seen places, it was very disappointing to see that Doctor Strange did not do the same thing. It should be even easier to do that with a magical superhero movie, but it does not do anything fun with it at all. I'm not even asking for a movie where Doctor Strange runs around the multiverse seeing all these different superheroes with a bunch of unexpected cameos, because that is the last thing I want. I just wanted to see something completely off the wall. I wanted to go into all these crazy universes that we only got to peek into for a split second. There is still a lot of cool new things we got to see, like the magic, the monsters, and the dark side of the mystic arts. The scene where Strange fights the evil version of himself using music notes was so creative, along with some of the other things I mentioned before. But it still just wasn't quite enough to make up for the lack of fun multiverse stuff that we were promised. I did still enjoy this movie, and I'm so glad we finally got to see a Marvel movie with memorable direction, which I hope will become a trend with these movies going forward. 
Even though I was very disappointed by some parts of it, I had a great time with the rest. It's not the best Marvel movie, and it's not even the best multiverse movie that came out this year, but it's enjoyable nonetheless. I'm going to give Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness a 7 out of 10. If you're looking for a fun, action-packed movie to see this week, I'd definitely recommend it. But if you're looking for the true multiverse experience, I've said it before and I'll say it again, go see Everything Everywhere all at once. Let me know what you thought of the movie if you saw it, because I'd love to hear if people are thinking the same way I am. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe to see more videos like this, and you can check out this playlist right here to see my other Marvel reviews. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.